Thank you. So, yeah, you got the right room if you came for biohacking from a new perspective. If you're looking for expert opinions and knowledge, I'm sorry, that, that's over at DEF CON in a few days. Um, this is a good intro for it. Anyway, yeah, as he said, my name is Doug Copeland. My friends call me Cooper. I'm a, I'm a student at WGU uh, studying uh, computer science, specializing in network security. I'm co-host of a podcast that sometimes talks about security called uh, Saha Says. It's available on iTunes and pod podcasts. Feel free to subscribe and tweet us and give us a, give some comments. Um, some people you know, don't even know that we have a podcast for Saha, as uh, they often like to comment. Anyway, yeah, like the title says, I'm a noob with this. I got implanted in January um, at Biohack Con in Austin. So I've only had a few months to play with it, but I'm already having a lot of fun. Figured I'd share some of the fun I'm having. And yes, I am actually still job hunting. Um, I'm a volunteer sysadmin. I'm not getting paid for it. I'm doing it just to keep my skills fresh. Give me something to do while studying at WGU. Anyway, let's go ahead and get, jump into it. What do you think when you think cyborg? I don't know. I often think and just want to go up to this gentleman here and say, you're close, I need them. <laughs> Unfortunately, I couldn't get fully into that role. You know, orange is not my color, sorry. But anyway, cyborg is a fictional term. It came about in the 60s by a couple of guys. Biohacking, it's kind of like the, the movement, the method. Grinder is actual, the actual person. You know, kind of like with hacking, you've got hackers and crackers. And biohacking, you have grinders. It's not the app. So if you're looking to come and learn about the app, I'm sorry. I know nothing about it. <laughs> no crossover. And uh, yeah, really, this is not something you really want to do by yourself at home. Save it for adulting with uh, people that know what they're doing and can keep things clean. Because you know, often enough, these devices are powered by lithium batteries. And if we've, you know, if y'all have checked out on YouTube, you know, with you know, fun hoverboards and other things that are powered by lithium batteries, they can be punctured, damaged, explode, fire. I don't want that in my body. That's why I don't have any lithium-ion batteries inside. Not until they get it a little bit better, just a little bit. Magnets, yeah, the the best ones are pretty expensive and they're coated in like gold. Some of the worst ones are coated in hot glue. I don't know about you, but hot glue isn't a really good biosafing material in my opinion. It's just my opinion. Uh, I, I used to be a firefighter EMT and there's certain things I'll put in my body, on my body. Crazy glue is one of them, but not hot glue. Because, you know, chemical cauterization, totally different. And uh, of course I mentioned keep it clean. Much like uh, this talk, I'm gonna try and keep it clean. Very little French will be used. And let's go ahead and uh, let you know, give you a couple examples of some of the leading grinders. This guy, Neil, he's from the UK, totally designed this uh, apparatus to help him uh, experience a world being born colorblind. It allows him to hear color. Amazing TED talk about it. Um, and the most fun about it is right here. You can scan your face and then give you an MP3 about it. So I, when I got to meet him at the Biohack Con, I really wanted him to scan my face because that'd be an awesome ringtone. It's like, you know, best thing, put that on loop. It probably is annoying because it's just tones, but it'd be really unique. But I, I definitely suggest uh, taking a look at Cyborg Nest. <clears throat> with, for because he's also got information about the North Paw, which is an implantable that will tell you basically where North is. So if you're one of those people that doesn't have a decent sense of direction, I highly suggest it. That way you might be a little bit less lost. Maybe Google Maps over Apple Maps, definitely. Otherwise, you might end up in Antarctica. Anyway, this is a. Uh, Another individual, she is 
very brave, very much so cutting edge, very much so um, radical in her approach. Um, does it very much so on the budget, what have you. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to be very um, careful as far as how to express because a lot of what she does is, you know, and makes her end up in the hospital. And it concerns me because, you know, I, you know, I would stress doing this not by yourself with, with help, what have you. But a lot of what she has done it gives a lot of really good information, but just needs a little bit, in my opinion, just a little bit better um, materials, what have you, just to just to keep yourself safe. Um, Here's another individual I met as well, and he's actually the, his company is the one that produced the implants that I have. I'd like to point out that he has a really good uh, TED Talk as well, where he just gives you just the basics as far as the movement, where, you know, where it's going, or where it is now for the most part, and where it's been, because the guy's been doing this for over a decade. You know, just really good information. Um, and actually, he'll be at DEF CON talking as well and, and, in, and in implanting people as well. So let's go ahead and do the math. I went to BiohackCon. I originally just went just to check it out, ended up getting conned into helping with AV. Met the guy with dangerous things. So he had uh, fun little th devices, size of green rice. And I went up just to talk to him to get some more information for the podcast, uh, Saha says, and find out a little bit more about it. And one of the interesting things I you know, said is, I do martial arts, I used to be a firefighter. I'm very active. Putting some, a glass shard in my hand sounds a little bit dangerous to me. I don't really like shrapnel. I don't know about y'all. It, it, it hurts, it causes damage. It's like, well, when we were originally um, beta testing it, we stuck it in a, you know, in a chicken you know, they got from the grocery store, completely thawed, then put it in a hydraulic press and turned it into butter. The device actually survived. The chicken did not. So key thing to remember on that is you might lose your hand, but you'll still have the device. So yeah, I went and he was, I asked him, so um, OK, put my hand out, and then I saw the needle. Oh boy, did I see the needle. And it's, it's kind of big. It's a, uh, you know, if you've ever had a cartilage piercing, it's kind of similar to that kind of pain. Kind of not, a little bit more. And uh, since also it's this type of product doesn't have like a bioadhesive on it, it moves around until the body stabilizes it. Something to keep in mind. But also it makes it easy for upgrades. So if they come out with a new one that does that much more, just cut a little slit and pop it right out. But yeah. Not the most fun I've had on a Saturday afternoon. But anyway, at least uh, I'm hoping nobody really had a big breakfast. <laughs> if you did, a little late, but look away. Yeah, I, I totally forgot to warn you if you have a weak stomach, don't look at the screen. A <laughs> little late. So now that I'm implanted, what now? Does my hand go bad? Do I have to cut it off and get a chainsaw <laughs> and fight the forces of evil? But I have one in each hand. That, is there a video game like that? And maybe I need to make one. But two chainsaws, that doesn't make me very popular in public. Anyway, so yeah. A little, uh, little reference from Stone Cold here. You got two of them now. Give you a little hint, NFC, off and off, that's what you do with your, with your uh, cell phone, RFID. That's like the HID cards that you, you know, use to get in and out of stuff. I'm not gonna give you the full definition, so you sit there and read it real, through it, real quick. Wikipedia can do that so much better than me. But anyway, so I, you know, I'm still in progress on, since like I said, I got it in January. I'm working on a, doing keyless start for my motorcycle and car. Because I don't know about you, I don't like to carry a lot of stuff around. Just one more thing I can lose. 
So it'd be great to, I would have loved to have you know, shown a video of you know, me keylessly starting my motorcycle. Turns out I need to rebuild the carburetor. So it would have been a funny video. It's like, tap it, it tries to turn over, but then it just, <laughs> but I figured I'd save that for later. Anyway, yeah, often enough it's, you know, if you do a lot of work um, with churches, what have you, you end up with a million keys. But the keyless start was working, it was just something unrelated that was causing the bike to work. Definitely. It's called, you let it sit too long, and then you have to pull the carburetor off, soak it in gas, take it apart, put it back together in, or you just have your buddy spray a carb cleaner in it while you start it and pray he doesn't set your foot on fire. We're not gonna show that video today, maybe, maybe later if you give me whiskey on my end. Let's put it this way, stop, drop, and roll does work. And also, since I'm job hunting, I always run out of cards. I had 100 yesterday, I have none today. But I still have the chip in my left, left hand, right? It's my business card. But also, since I'm interested in network security, interested in red teaming, is there an application here I can use? It just made me think. You know, so right hand, like I said, doors, what have you, uh, makes it really easy. It's re-recordable, what have you. So here's, here's the easiest way to you know, incorporate it into motorcycle, doors, what have you. It just depends on what your budget is, because this is like, 20, 25 bucks uh, at dangerousthings.com. Really, really easy to use. And that's what I have on my motorcycle. I want to get another one for my, my Prius one day. But here's some nice little tip from friends with uh, Longhorn Lock Sport because I asked them about you know, quality of locks on a Panasonic, or no, Samsung lock, and they led me on to this one here, Security Snobs very much so fun, especially since you can act, use the RFID tag and a pin, so it's two-factor. I like two-factor. I wouldn't mind having it on my house. And if you, I really, you know, also got a backup of a key too, so technically it could be called three-factor, but I'll go with the two myself. That way I don't have, I have one less thing to carry around. So, you know, like I mentioned earlier, electronic business card in my left hand. You know, it's got my name, email, cell phone number, linked to my online resume. Or does it? So, yeah, my sense of humor is a little bit off, as you, if you haven't already noticed. But you know, potential job interviews, it might be kind of fun to see if they have a sense of humor. If they don't, if they just stone cold you and just be like, why? I don't know if I really want to work for him. But, you know, this is not, you know, talking about the red team aspect, I saw these two videos, I want to give them credit because they, they're the ones that gave me the original idea after I got the chips of, what do I do with this now? Because that was like the first thing my wife said when I came home, she was like, okay, you got this. How much does it cost? What are you going to do with it? And what were you thinking? Great wife, right? But yeah, Bishop Fox, they made a great, great open, open source hardware device called an RF-tastic thief. So I went ahead and built it, and here was my generic plan for it. You know, everybody uses e these often enough everywhere to get in parking garages or the workplace. So I'm gonna use this fun little device from Dangerous Things to see if it's high or low frequencies, to see if I can scan it and then encode it to my left hand, or if I need to, uh, then figure out how to encode it to my right hand well, from the capture. <clears throat> and you know, this is generic pictures of it. And there's the encoder here that also got from Dangerous Things for the low frequency, and of course, end up on the hand, so that once I get in, if I get caught, which hopefully their security is good enough uh, during the during the pen test, then I can be like. And they'll get me to empty out my pockets, what have you, and it's like, I don't have anything. No lock picks, no card, nothing. Just keys and my wallet. And they're like, what are you doing? Went to the bathroom. Just looking for a bathroom, man. 
How'd you get in here? Door was wide open. I don't know what you're talking about. What do you mean? You have security here? But you know, here's that card scanner in action. Should be a video. Due to technical difficulties, apparently it's a still picture. But when you put the card up to a scanning point, okay, maybe it's just slow. Whenever you put the card up to the plate, it then goes uh, on the right or left, letting me know if it's high or low frequency. But anyway, here's my build of it. I started out with this tiny little uh, uh, antenna. It's the cheapest thing I could find uh, instead of like five, 600 bucks on eBay. I found one for 20 and I was like, sweet, I can get started. Got it built, uh, what have you, and but found that range was terrible. Like I, even uh, the regular just plain ID cards, I'd almost have to be just like uh, Mr. Robot and walk up to the coffee shop and dry hump the badge with my bag because the, the thing is so tiny. But we're not even gonna talk about you know the keychains or the actual implants, that, that, was, that was just ridiculous, trying to get a good read. So then I got lucky, found that, uh, four times the size, full messenger bag uh, size antenna, uh, got lucky on eBay, some guy in South Austin was uh, going out of business and uh, even met me at Starbucks. I didn't have to wait to ship it. So got that, unfortunately, much like a, a pen tester I know, thanks to the, found that the keychains still are a pain to get a decent read, and implants are as well. So that makes me feel better about using it for my own doors. You know, it's harder to get a read, but still those ID badges, worst thing ever. I can, unlike the depiction in Mr. Robot, I could have sat at the coffee shop table and just pointed in the guy's general direction and got a, got a good read, not walk up there and be like, Hi, how's it going? I'm just here to tip the guy. No, idiot. But, so, what's next? Am I, you know, I've already done some fun stuff. Where am I going with this next? What other than just building out more ways to have fun without keys? Well, uh, Dangerous Things has an encrypted payment system chip coming out this fall. I'm, I got lucky and I'm getting a beta of it. So I'm gonna get to actually learn about encryption and see if I can break the thing. And we'll see, we'll see how good it is. Definitely gonna let them all know one way or another. If, and then also try and get some other friends that are so much more gifted at encryption than I am to see what they can come up with too. Cause hey, it's fun. So breaking things can be fun. The other one is, uh, Basically, just, just like uh, my left hand, but it's a, a flat polymer instead of the glass tube. Um, the main reason for that is to have a much better read and range, which can be a little, makes me a little bit hesitant about sniffing it. But to give you an idea of the difference between a flat and a cylinder, grain of rice earlier was the one that I have. This one's a beta, basically a beta build of it to try and match the readability of just this flat little thing. That glass tube, I could not put in the web of my hand. That would have to be in my arm, and uh, I don't know, it's just a little bit too big for me. I'm thinking I'll bump into, bump into things like I normally do, shatter it, and then, yeah, won't end well. So, yeah, but I'm hoping to pick, uh, pick up the regular one, like my left hand, over at DEF CON uh, later this week. Unfortunately, I have to wait on the payment system one until this fall. Then I will definitely uh, see what goes on there. But anyway, this is what I have for you today. I wanna thank you for coming out. It's my first time at B-Sides talking, first time in Las Vegas. Please don't throw me in a pool later. But if you want you know, conversation, questions, what have you, this is a short version uh, of information that I could have given you since I only had 20 minutes. I've got more information if you want. Feel free to hit me up on Twitter, what have you. And yes, uh, that's a tattoo I have as well at the bottom. But yes, thank you for coming out. Thank you, Doug. We do have time for questions. Uh, 
You can just raise your hand for questions. Okay. Do you have the NFC chip or the RFID chip? I have both. Okay. Do they have any interference with each other? No, because different frequencies. You have a, the NFC chip is a high frequency, RFID is a low frequency. So different applications, different uses. How difficult is it to reprogram them? Uh, how much can it store, that kind of thing? Basically, you know, if the NFC one uh, is compromised, how bad is it in order to uh, flush it with a different code? Uh, if you're talking about the, well, the more advanced one is uh, my left hand. It can hold just a little bit of data. It's ba very basic stuff, basically like a link. And then simple text to identify what's on there. Uh, my right hand, which is basically like the, the key, it's just a string of numbers. Not much at all on there. It, so it's, it's very limiting, but the application on how you use it is where it becomes fun. Uh, good morning, interesting talk. Um, on the slide you had about from DEF CON 2015, Bishop Fox. What was the reference that was just under that? It was Blackwing, Black... I, I Bla yeah, that. Blackwing Intelligence. I think so. They were talking I, I missed uh, it. they premised uh, using implants for uh, red teaming. Let's see if I can get this to work. Okay, cheers, thanks. And I can bring it back to you. Or just hit me up on Twitter, I can send it to you. That's yeah. And what is your Twitter handle? Cooper C zero zero P three R underscore seven. Is that your final slide? Yep. Love technology. There. Uh, Blackwing intelligence. Okay. Anyway, if I can actually get this to work, that'd be nice. <laughs> uh, it's just my nickname or handle underscore seven is my Twitter. Make it easy that way. On the implantables, uh, do you know with that large gauge needle, is that usually a disposable or is that one of, uh, is that still in the, re in the you have to re-sterilize, reuse? It's a disposable. I would not suggest any needles, even, you know, even if you happen to be diabetic, never, never clean and reuse it because you know, it's too easy for contents inside to transfer other stuff that you don't want in your body. And that goes with all needles, not just implants. The large ones even are only like five bucks. Yeah. There's no I have been out for so long and your life football was having auto play. Right. No, they're they have disposable everything. 